You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Australia? Why in the world do you want to leave of absence to go to Australia, Ken? Take another look at that newspaper clipping, Chief. Ken, those fairy tales about sea monsters have popped up every year since I can remember. Sure, but this one was reported in Kangaroo Bay, Australia. Well, what's so different about that? Chief, do you remember Clark Kirby? Kirby? Uh, that uh, engineer friend of yours? Yeah, he's working on a practical, economical method of converting seawater into fresh water. Now think of it. Fresh water in limitless quantities. Every desert on Earth turned into fertile soil. Oh, sure, Ken, I know. But what's that got to do with this sea monster business? I just got a letter from Kirby. He says the experiments are progressing well. He's sure he's on the right track. Only now he's afraid that, as he puts it, some unbelievable fantasy might put an end to the entire project. Unbelievable fantasy? Now, wait a minute, Ken. Where's Kirby making these experiments? That's right, Chief. In Kangaroo Bay, Australia. thought I'd make it. Hey, go on. What are you doing here? Miss Brooks at the bureau. She just happened to let slip you were going on a trip. Now, relax. This is one time you're not going with me. Mr. Thurston, I just thought you maybe could use this movie camera. Huh? What makes you think I want a movie camera? Oh, just an idea. Uh, Mr. Thurston, have you heard from your old friend Clark Kirby recently? He writes every now and then. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe you saw this thing in the morning paper all about some kind of a sea monster down in Kangaroo Bay, Australia. What are you driving at, Pagan? Well, he happened to be going down under to visit Mr. Kirby, and we're wondering maybe about the sea monster. I guess you could tell if it was a fake or not if I took some movie pictures. Ah. You might have something there, if you have the price of a fare to Australia. Well, you see, my oldest, dearest friend... Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. So long, Pagan. I have to pick up my reservations. Well, don't bother, Mr. Thurston. I picked them up for you. I see... Two tickets for Brisbane, Australia, charged to my account. They are? Uh, uh, now, how do you suppose that stupid ticket agent made such a mistake? Oh, well, uh, shall we get aboard?
So this is Kangaroo Bay, eh? Boy, what a joint. Nobody's around, not even kangaroos. Uh, Mr. Thurston, I thought you sent a wire from Brisbane so Kirby would meet us. Well, I did. Something must have held him up at the laboratory. Let's see if there's a phone in that tobacco shop across the street. Look out, Mago! Hi there. Hi, yourself. Rather warm to be daydreaming in the middle of the square, isn't it? Or perhaps you're just lost. Can I help? Maybe you can. We're looking for transportation. <laughs> Why anyone would want to travel around this ghastly place, I can't imagine. But I'll be happy to give you a lift. That'll be appreciated. I'm Margaret Williams. My name's Ken Thurston. And I'm Pagan Zelschmidt. Well, that handles the proprieties nicely. Hop in. Thanks. Well, don't you want to know where we're going? Well, that's hardly necessary. Oh? There are only two places to go. The desert or the cove of Kangaroo Bay. You're hardly the desert type. Well, thanks. Americans, eh? Naturally. Can't you tell by our accents? <laughs> Why two Americans should come down here, I'll never know. With New York to live in, Paris and London only an overnight trip away. Why, Mr. Thurston? Just visiting an old friend of mine, Clark Kirby. Clark Kirby? You know him, Miss Williams? Are you another fool dreaming of turning sea into fresh water? Mm, I didn't know that only fools dreamt of that. Well, there's nothing sensible about wasting a fortune trying to bring dead land back to life when the money might be better spent in enjoying life that's available. I'd call that a rather short-sighted attitude. Well, call it what you will. If you want my advice, you'll turn right back for the States. Any particular reason for saying that? Yes, Mr. Thurston. You made your trip for nothing. Last night, Clark Kirby was drowned in Kangaroo Bay. Clark Kirby's laboratory, pig, huh? Boy, what a gloom-looking place. Nothing happening here but seagulls. Are you going in there? Yeah. Take the camera down to that cove. Shoot some test film of the bay. Maybe you'll get some shots of that sea monster to make the trip worthwhile. Okay, Mr. Thurston. I'll meet you later. Stand right where you are, please. Well, you always greet guests this way? Who are you? What do you want here? My name's Ken Thurston. And I'd like a little hospitality. Without firearms. Ken Thurston? Clark Kirby's friend? That's right. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Thurston. Please, come in. No, that's better. I, uh, I'm George Llewellyn. Clark Kirby's associate here. Please pardon the melodramatics, but I, too, have no desire to be murdered. Murdered? I thought Kirby had drowned. Well, he went for a swim in the bay. He was a strong swimmer. Yet he made only one dive and never came up. His body hasn't been recovered. That doesn't spell murder, Llewellyn. No? I guess not. But after all the trouble we've had here, the, the possibility our laboratory might close, I, I guess I just can't think straight any longer. Suppose you tell me a little more about it. Well, didn't Clark write to you about Lee Williams? Lee Williams? Who's he? Well, he's a very wealthy man, Thurston. He's the one who's financing our laboratory here. Any relation to uh, Margaret Williams? She's Lee's niece, his only heir. And the one person who's liable to put an immediate end to our experiments. Well, how could she do that? By getting her uncle declared mentally incompetent by the courts. Because she feels he's squandering money that's rightfully hers on these experiments. Mm, surely she isn't getting anywhere on that basis? No, but Lee is elderly. His mind's not as keen as it once was. So when this sea monster yeah, I, story... I was wondering when that, when that was coming up. Lee Williams is the only one who claims to have seen it. No one else has. I see. And Margaret figures that his fantastic story or hallucination may be the final proof she needs. Exactly. Eh? Certainly one more incident of any kind involving him would be enough. That would mean this laboratory would be closed. And it can't be, Thurston. We're too close. I'd commit murder myself to keep it going. I'd... Help! Inside there! Help! Someone's in trouble outside that door. Come on. Help! 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 Help
Help, Llewellyn, help. Good heavens, it's our neighbor, Captain Malchus. He's a bad scalp wound he's got. Here, yeah, give me a hand with it. That's right. Get him on the couch. Put him down there. All Easy. Right. Easy. Yeah. There. Thank you. What happened, Captain? How'd you get that wound? It was a boomerang, Llewellyn. Boomerang? Yes. It was coming here from my house. Someone, someone tried to kill me. You have any idea who it was, Captain? I didn't, I, I didn't get a chance to look, but I'm sure it was Lee Williams. Thanks for seeing me back, Mr. Thurston. But you didn't have to bother. I was heading for the cove anyway, Captain Malquist. And I wanted to hear more about that attack. Well, I've told you all I can. No reason for it I know of. I always figured old Lee was a good friend. Still do, for that matter. There's my place now. Near that inlet. How'd you happen to settle down here to retire, Captain? Seems like a pretty lonely spot. No spot of dry land's too lonely for a man who's been sailing for 30 years. Now, I have a little oyster bed down there. It keeps me busy. Finest eating oysters on this side of the equator. So quiet and peaceful here. Or was until the last few days. Yeah? Too bad about Kirby. He was a fine man. I only hope Llewellyn can carry on. I'd like to see those experiments work. It's a great thing. I didn't know you were interested in them, Captain. Mr. Thurston, in my days at sea... I've known too many men who've died of thirst with undrinkable water stretching to the horizon all around them. Uh, that's a pretty good reason for having an interest. Best I know. Well, I'll be saying goodbye now. Drop around to my diggings any time. I'd like to shoot the breeze with you. Goodbye, Thurston. Goodbye, Captain. Hey, Mr. What are you doing hiding behind those rocks? Watching a crazy man, that's what. Crazy man? Sure. Look at him over there, staring at out at the ocean like it was a chorus girl or something. And he keeps muttering about that sea monster. A real screwball. That must be Lee Williams. Let's have a talk with him. Good evening, Mr. Williams. Oh, good good evening, sir. You you haven't seen it, have you? Seen what? The sea monster? No, Mr. Williams. No, I haven't. But someone has to see it. Someone besides me, I. I have to prove that it really exists. Do you understand? Or do you two think I'm crazy? I wouldn't say that, sir. Tell me, what does a sea monster look like? Oh, it, it must have been over a hundred feet long, undulating like a snake, a, a ferocious head with, with horns that could gore a man to death like a vicious bull. It was just this time of day, at twilight, some 50 yards out to sea. 50 yards out? But it's getting so dark you can hardly see even that log that just pushed ashore. It could be anything. It could be a... It could be... Mr. X. That's no log. Let's go over there. Mr. Thurston. It... It's a dead man. Yes, Pagan. Huh? That's the body of Clark Kirby. But what happened to him? He looks like he was... Uh, he was gored to death, maybe by a bull or by... Yes, my friend, exactly. Or by some strange monster of the sea. Just a moment, we return to Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. It's the mechanism that makes the cold, that makes the big difference in refrigerators. That's why it's so important to keep in mind that Frigidaire refrigerators and only Frigidaire refrigerators are powered by the famous meter miser. For here is the simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. Not a single belt or gear or pulley. And of course... Parts that aren't there just can't cause trouble or wear. Why, so sure is Frigidaire of the meter miser that it's actually sealed in steel 
oiled for life. And this, in turn, makes trouble-free operation of a meter miser even more of a certainty, for no dust or dirt or moisture can get at it. Yes, this is the marvelous device that makes the cold in frigid air refrigerators, a mechanism as accurately made and assembled as a fine watch, yet with all the power needed, even in the hottest weather. Remember, it's the mechanism that makes the cold that makes the big difference in refrigerators. And remember, for the meter miser, for all the other advantages that only frigid air can give you, ask to see the name frigid air when you ask to see a new refrigerator. And now to return to Frigid Air's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Clark Kirby was working toward one of mankind's brightest dreams, a practical method of turning salt water into fresh. But his last letter from Kangaroo Bay, Australia, said that something strange threatened to halt the entire experiment. And when Ken flew down there, he found Clark dead, his body gored as though by a ferocious bull or some monster of the sea. Now, later that night, Ken is in the laboratory talking with George Llewellyn, Kirby's associate, when the door opens. Wayfarer seek shelter from the terrors of the night. Your dramatics possess little humor, Margaret. Come in. I trust you take more delight in my presence than George does, Mr. Thurston. Why so happy this evening, Miss Williams? Why, haven't you heard about my uncle's little boomerang throwing party? The attack on Captain Malquist? Well, why were you so elated about that? Who would suddenly and without provocation attack anyone with a boomerang? Unless the attacker were insane. Insane? Now, just a moment, You can Margaret. save your breath, George between sea monsters and homicidal attacks. I'm afraid Lee Williams is totally incompetent to handle his affairs. The constable's looking for him now to place him in custody. And what happens to the laboratory if you take over the estate? You know the answer to that, Mr. Thurston. There'll be no more money thrown away on ridiculous experiments like this one. There's nothing ridiculous about wastelands being made fertile, about fields of grain replacing rocks and sand. Foolish dreams, Mr. Thurston. Not nearly as practical as mine. Paris, London, New York, living the way I want to live. <laughs> no, you can forget about this laboratory. From now on, it's Margaret Williams first, and flowers blooming in the desert be hanged. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Malchrist. This is a pleasure, Mr. Thurston. Uh, uh, sit down, sir. Sit down. I've only a minute, Captain. I just wanted to tell you that Lee Williams is going to be arrested because of that attack on you last night. Why, that's nonsense, Mr. Thurston. I, I won't press charges against him. I didn't think you would, but uh, Margaret Williams will. Oh, the insanity hearings again. That's right. She thinks that attack will be the clinching argument. Yes, perhaps it will. And she'll have the money in Clark Kirby's dream. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. I see you've quite a collection of mother-of-pearl articles, Captain. Yes, I make them, Mr. Thurston. Knife handles, buckles. <laughs> Keeps a man busy during the off-season. Now, now, look at, look at this one here. Just finished it yesterday. A sea serpent with a horned head. Yes, I made it from poor Lee's description. Uh, what do you think about that? Did he really see it? Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, well, something like that could have gored Kirby to death, couldn't it? And if there was any way to prove it, or well, maybe that would be proof that Lee isn't crazy after all. A good theory, Captain, except for one thing. Kirby was not gored to death. What? The autopsy shows the horn wounds were superficial. Death was caused by a blow in the head. No sea monster killed Kirby. He was murdered. <laughs> Ha 
But who goes swimming at 7 o'clock in the morning, Mr. X? I never heard of such a thing. That water looks like liquid ice. What do you care? I'm going in, you're not. Sure, but the very thought of diving into that stuff gives my goose pimples. Just keep your eyes open. I want to learn what Clark Kirby ran into. And I don't want any trouble from above the water. Don't worry, Mr. X. I'll keep my... Clark Kirby? Is this the place he took a dive? That's right. So watch it. But Mr. Thurston... Oh. How can he do things like that? Perhaps he's looking for the spot where the body's buried. <laughs> oh, Miss Williams, don't say things like that. Yeah, and where did you come from? I came down here looking for my uncle. He seems to have disappeared. I thought he might be down here trying to see that imaginary monster of his. That story smells like fish to me. Mr. Thurston's coming up now, and as soon as he... Hey, what's going on there? He's not coming up. He's fighting something under the water. Under the water? Hey, the sea monster, maybe. Well, do something, you idiot. He'll drown down there. You know, if I only had a gun or something. Come up, Mr. Thurston, come up. Oh, I can't look. Save your tears, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, you... You're all right. Yeah. Hello, Margaret. Come down to watch the fun. What happened down there, Mr. Thurston? Something came out of a bed of grass behind me. I didn't see it, but whatever it was, it gave me quite a bump on the head before it left. And that's what happened to Clark Kirby. Not quite. He didn't come up again, you remember? However, I've learned enough to take your advice, Miss Williams. I'm going back to Brisbane. Pagan Zelfschmidt speaking. Hello, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, are you still in Brisbane? Yeah, that's right. Yes. What happened since I left? Practically nothing. That screwball Lee Williams is still missing, and so is my exposed movie film. Some no-good crook stole all of it. Yeah, I know. Look, Pagan, I'm coming back tonight. Have Margaret Williams, George Llewellyn, and Captain Malquist at the laboratory. What do you want them for? Pagan, I'm going to show them the worst monster they ever... ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. No one forced you to come, Margaret. Mr. Llewellyn's right, baby. Must be pretty interested in what Mr. Thurston's going to spill. And from what I've seen of this Thurston, he'll not be wasting our time when he shows up. Perhaps, Captain. Don't worry, Llewellyn. I won't waste it. Oh, you Hello, got Mr. Here, Thurston. Huh? I see you got here all right. Yeah, everything's set. Oh, sure. The movie projection machine's all ready. Fine. Put this wheel of film on, will you? It's good as did, Mr. Thurston. Come on in, Mr. Williams. Uncle. So, old Williams himself. Thurston has been my host in Brisbane these past few days. How sweet of him. And he's going to prove to all of you that I am not insane. Isn't that right, Mr. Thurston? It's quite right. I see no examining board of psychiatrists with you. All I need is to show you a few feet of film. Ready, Pagon? Everything's hanky doodle, Mr. Thurston. Good. Then turn off the lights. We'll get started. That's some film of that cove along Kangaroo Bay, isn't it? Hey, sure is. That's the film I shot. The stuff some dirty crook stole from me. Nobody stole it. I took it to Brisbane for processing. I must say it hardly seems worthwhile. Lights poor, photography rather amateurish. That's because Pagon shot that film near twilight, Llewellyn. The same hour of the day that Lee Williams was wandering near the cove. The same hour of the day he looked out toward the sea and saw something. Something strange and weird. Swimming out there in that haze. Something that looks like it might be... The uh, sea monster! The sea monster! There it is! See it! The monster! He's right. There is something out there. Thank God, it It's like a snake. A huge snake swimming out at sea. All right, Pagan. Stop the projector. Turn on the lights. Oh, it was there, right on the film. Just as I saw it that evening. The rest of you saw it, too. Didn't you? Yes, they saw it, Mr. Williams. But I didn't take no pictures of anything like that. Of course you didn't. It was all a trick. Admit it, Mr. Thurston. It was a trick, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a trick. But I proved that Lee Williams didn't have to be insane to see a sea monster. He saw what all of you just did. A herd of sea cows. Sea cows? Are you serious, sir? That's right, Llewellyn. That was an old travelogue shot of a bull manatee leading his herd. It was processed with pagan shot to the bay. And those eight creatures, swimming single file, seen at a distance in twilight... Looks like one giant sea serpent. 
I should have thought of that myself. I've seen them many times in New Hebrides. Well, that might explain my uncle's hallucinations, Mr. Thurston. But it doesn't explain Clark Kirby's death or the attack made on you in the cove. No, Margaret. Another kind of monster was responsible for those. One that walks on two feet. That sounds strangely like some human being you're referring to, Thurston. If you can call anyone human who killed Kirby, tried to kill me, and was willing to destroy an experiment that could open new eras of prosperity for the entire world, and just to preserve a secret. A secret, Mr. Thurston? It must be a very valuable one. In valuable? <laughs> that depends on how you look at it. Judge for yourselves. Look at that. Mr. Thurston. That's a pearl you tossed on the table. Yes, pig, on a pearl. The answer to the secret that Kirby discovered was a fabulous pearl oyster bed lying in the cove of Pangaroo Bay. Isn't there, Captain Malchus? You'll never prove it, sir. Wait for guns now. Captain Balquist. Yes, Margaret, my old friend. Everything he did, even to faking that boomerang attack, to close the laboratory so that he could have the cove all to himself. But how did you know, Thurston? His mother of pearl handiwork gave him away. Thick layers like that are found only in pearl-bearing oysters, and it took someone with a diving rig to stage those underwater attacks. So there wasn't any sea monster after all? No, Pagan. But there was something else, something even more frightening. Malthus would have denied the world a chance to live in security. Would have sacrificed the future of millions to satisfy his own personal greed. You know, Pagan, no sea monster ever conceived by the brain of man can be as frightening, as monstrous, as a man whose soul is possessed by greed. star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. I invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Mr. Niles, how does the Frigidaire electric range compare with Frigidaire refrigerator? Lady, it's just as good at making things good to eat as the Frigidaire refrigerator is at keeping things good to eat. It's fast, it's easy to use, it's a beauty. I hope you'll see it soon at your Frigidaire dealers. And now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Saturday, September 18th, has been designated as Air Force Day in recognition of the first anniversary of the Air Force as an independent arm. The celebration reminds America that air power is peace power and stresses the importance of air power in this nation's security program. We salute the Air Force. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Dangerous Island, a story of science and murder. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zelshner. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by D. Engelbach. The music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Marie Zim and Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons... This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center.